Raiders, Rams, week two, preseason preview. Today on Night of the Shield. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Night of the Shield. My name is Jason Smith, a.k.a. The Knight. And yes, this is brought to you by the Independently Blind Studios. And yes, it is preseason time. We are gearing up. This is my fourth video of the week. I'm pumped up and excited. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be up updated every time I drop another episode. And hit that like button. Let's continue to move up the algorithm. All right, let's not take too much time on this one. It shouldn't be that hard to talk about preseason football. I know a lot of people feel like it's a waste of time. We shouldn't do it. I, I disagree. I think that especially as a young football team with a coach that's only in a second year, a first-time GM, I think these are some crucial times for the Las Vegas Raiders, man. This is time for us to look at the young players they brought in, both drafted and undrafted, and make sure that these guys are not only developing, that we make sure that we hold the right guys, whether they make the 53 or they end up on the practice squad. We want to make sure that we secure some of these diamonds in the rough that we have found. One of those diamonds in the rough that I'm really looking for to see play again this week is Nessa right there on the defensive tackle spot. I really want to see this guy step it up. His name keeps coming up in practice. So when you hear his name that much in practice, I want to see something a little bit more. Come game time when the lights come on, I want to see this strong, big man push the line like I hear he's been doing and make some plays in the middle of that defense. I want to see a returning uh, performance for our linebackers. I want to see Bernie come up and make another play, maybe have an opportunity for a pick or use his speed on the outside and, and just do some damage there. I want to see Chris Smith this week, right? A lot of talk about Chris Smith. That, line, that, that secondary has gotten really beefed up, and, you know, and I want to see the, we know we got Epps and Merrick that seem to be holding that starting spot down. Chris Smith was a wild card. I kind of want to see him step up a bit more this week and, and make some big hits and maybe even get a good play himself. And then, of course, on the offensive side of the ball, we all know where the spotlight is. We'll, we'll talk a little bit in a minute about Aiden O'Connell. But, I mean, there's some things there. We want to see Zeus. We want to see Zeus take the next step. Uh, and look, it, you know, it's going to take four quarters and some rhythm to average four yards a carry. In the preseason, when you're just getting a few carries – you know, you're going to have to you're going to take your bumps, you're going to take your lumps and you're going to have some big plays that pop out. But it takes four quarters to get that average up. It just does. Uh, the, I, I, he does need to show a little bit more speed and burst and maybe some more shiftiness. But I, I think Zeus looked all right. I want to see McCormick also return and, and step up his game and maybe raise his average a bit. You know, and I want to see Trey Tucker. I know he had a couple of drop passes. I want to see that corrected. You see the burst. You see the playmaking ability. I want to see him have a really big day. But that all starts with Aiden O'Connell. It really does start with Aiden O'Connell. I know there's a lot of talk, too, about the right tackle and right guard spot. I think that's going to work itself out. I think from what I've heard and from what I read, there's some talent over there. So whether it's Moody, whether it's whether it's Jermaine or Luminor or not, you got Van Rotten over there, Van Rotten Rotten. You know, I, I think he has an opportunity to be that right guard. And then you just kind of shift the Illuminor and Moody around, want to be a backup. I mean, let, that, let them play it out. It, it's a good problem to have. That's three guys I just mentioned that I think are talented enough to hold that right side down, and we only need two. Anyway, focus on Aiden a little bit because, again, man, I just I want to have another conversation about Aiden because everybody's talking, everybody, whether they cover the Raiders or not. Everybody's talking and looking at Aiden O'Connell, and I just want to make something very, very clear, okay? He looked fantastic last week. His footwork was, was epic. His composure was perfect in the pocket, and he stood there like a statue, and he slid to the right, and he slid to the left, and he found the open receiver, and he was, he was threading it out there a little bit. I mean, definitely can improve on some of the anticipation throws, and obviously, you know, this is his second game. I'm looking for him to take the next step. But there is no reason for us to have the conversation of putting Aiden O'Connell in a situation where he needs to start. He doesn't need to be our number one quarterback heading into week one. Now, we brought Jimmy G here for a reason. Jimmy knows he's a bridge quarterback. 
He knows he's not the future of what the Las Vegas Raiders are doing. I think he knows he could be a part of something really great the next, these next two years, or maybe this could be the one season he has an opportunity to shine and he has the weapons to do it. And we also know that Jimmy is known to be a little fragile. So, all right, if you're fragile, then fine. You know, that, that can open the door for Aiden. Uh, I think Hoyer is the perfect backup quarterback right now. I think he serves a bigger purpose than we realize. I think you're talking about a guy who's been in this very same system for a long period of time. He is not just someone there to be a backup. He is the bridge. He is the true strength and structure of that bridge that we're talking about, right? He's the, he's the, he's the thing that's holding it all together. He's there for Jimmy. He's helping Jimmy come along. He's showing Jimmy some of the, the ins and outs of the system. Because remember, it's been a long time since Jimmy's played in the system, right? And he's there helping Aiden understand and learn this system as well and kind of bringing him along. Hoyer has a, a significant role on this football team right now, and, and I definitely think that he should be our number two heading into the, at least the first quarter of the season. If Jimmy G stays healthy through that first quarter of the season, then I, I do think if you at that point, if you want to move Aiden up the depth chart, it would be perfect timing. We can see where we're at at the end of the first quarter, what the games look like. But right now is the perfect time to get Aiden as many reps as possible to see if he continues growing, keeping his composure, and really putting everything together, even against second and third, fourth string level caliber players. Because right now you're not looking for him to be beating number ones. You're looking for him to be able to read a defense, and know his reads inside each play that McDaniels calls, and then watch him go through his progressions real quick and bang, get the ball out of his hands. The more opportunity he has to do that, the quicker he picks up on the system, the verbiage, reading his reads and getting that ball out of his hand, everything else from there will take care of itself. I don't think we would have saw the same Brock Purdy and the Niners last year had he would have took over for Lance right away. I don't, I don't, I don't think we would have been the same Purdy, but I think because... He had that extended period of time before Jimmy got hurt. Along with, a, I mean, that, that team has a ton of weapons and a great defense. I think that helped him out along as well. But I don't think you need to throw Aiden to the Wolves early. Give him the time to absorb a regular season process. He can learn the preparation that Jimmy and Hoyer go through. He can learn how, to, how they put together the game plan, how they implement the game plan. How when things go wrong, how Jimmy and, and Hoyer work together to adapt and make changes along with McDaniels on the sideline. A couple of the weeks of them going into the room and, and going over tape and going over film and, and learning how to break film down from an NFL perspective along inside the system. There's no need to put that all on him on week one. I'm not saying the man can't handle it. The guy has shown great composure. I just don't think we're in a position right now that we need to force the issue. The only thing that I think about when it comes to Aiden O'Connell is if he continues to play like this in the offseason through these preseason games, we definitely might need to tap into this dude to kind of see what we're going to do in the draft next year if we're still looking for a quarterback. Because if this guy is the guy that could run this system and everything else has to come, I think there's, there's two parts to it, right? Because all these players that we've been talking about that have been undrafted and drafted, the second-year guys coming into this new regime along with the new guys that they're bringing in if it really starts to look like this is coming together the way that they envisioned it then you're going to want to test Aiden sooner than later because you're going to want to try to make that big push next year and Aiden can step in and be that guy along with these weapons that we have it'll be it'll be Mayor's second run at this in his second year you're going to have Tucker in his second year you're still going to have Devontae Adams, you'll still have the opportunity to hold on to Hunter. He's already been paid. You're still going to have Jacoby Myers. Like, man, dude, this, this team on offense would be stacked. It'd be perfect timing for Aiden to step in with a year under his belt and start slinging that rock around. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. But I don't think that we need to put our flag inside the stadium right now and put Aiden's face on it. Just don't. Let the kid develop. Let this thing play out. No, no, no need to rush it whatsoever. As far as the game win-loss, like I said, it doesn't really mean much to me <clears throat> because it is preseason. It's not so much about the win and loss, although although we hear all the time, practice 
should roll over into games. And if that's the case, even though it was a heavy dose of our starters in these joint practices, that's where the focal point was. These guys showed last week that they understand the system. Their communication's been really good. They really put it to the Niners offense. I expect that defense to come out and do the same to a rookie quarterback. So I'm expecting a little bit of the same. We should come out winning this game, but that's not where our focus should be. So I'm going to give you four players, two on each side of the ball, that I'm just like, there's a lot that I'm going to be keeping an eye on, but there's four players right now that I truly want to keep my eye on. I'm going to give it five. I'm going to bump it up to five because there's a third one on defense that I really want to watch. On the offensive side of the ball, obviously, Aiden O'Connell. Let's just get that one out of the way. I want to see him play another three quarters. I want to see him continue to keep his composure in the pocket, sling that rock around, read the defense, get the ball out of his hand, make smart decisions, and move the ball up and get some touchdowns. I really want to see him take another step into his progression as becoming the future quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's been looking promising. Outside of that, I really want to see Trey Tucker have a bigger game. Like There were so many opportunities for them to break out last year, both of them as a tandem. Uh, I think that Tucker has a great future in this league. I think he's going to be an excellent slot receiver before you know it, and he'll be a big playmaker. He needs to catch the ball. He needs to do a better job of holding on to the football, so I'm looking for Tucker to have a big game. So those are the two offensive players that I want to keep an eye on. On the defensive side of the ball, we've been hearing a ton about Nessa and about how strong he is in the middle, how he gets great push. And we saw a little bit of, of that last week, but not, not in the way that I expected, I guess I would say. So I want to see if Nessa could take that next step, come in on fire, and really push the middle of that offensive line of the Rams and create openings for these linebackers to come up and really make some plays. Speaking of linebackers, I got my eye on Amari Bernie. I, that guy really jumped off the tape last week. I know he also... Dropped an interception, so, I mean, he was seemed to be where he needed to be at all times. It looked like he was flying around out there. I'd like for him to take the next step. Again, here's a guy that is not going to be a starter, but you want to – this is the kind of players that I'm looking at, right? This is the kind of guy that I want to see perform really at a high level in preseason, have an opportunity maybe to play some special teams and really get into the mix and learning this because he's a guy that – like a lot like Luke Masterson has an opportunity to break out in year two and just bolster up that linebacker team. But we really need our linebackers to step up. That's the one thing I haven't heard a lot about in camp is how well I've heard about Spillane and his fire and his passion and him lining the whole defense up and really encouraging people around him. That's promising. But the linebackers as a whole haven't heard a lot about it. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. The fifth guy, the fifth one, that extra bonus one that I wanted to throw in there is Chris Smith. I believe our safety room is lining up really nice. There's still a lot of talks about this kid coming in and making plays. He'll have a, an opportunity to make plays on special teams. That's where he's going to make his living this year. But I want to see him step up and show that he has a great future, that he's going to be pushing for it next year because the more competition we have in our secondary and that back end is going to be huge. Now, I know I didn't bring up our corners. I think our corners are pretty solid. I really do. I think our corners have improved tremendously i think our pass rush has improved tremendously and i can't wait to see all that come together week one but those are my five guys so here's what i'm going to ask you all to do i'm going to challenge you guys in the comment section to give me your five or at least whatever number if you only have a couple you're looking at three four give me at least five five of players that you're kind of looking at and want to see something from and and uh, in this preseason game to kind of show not only that we have depth, but that we have a future in, in a team that's building that's very young and dynamic. And you see, and just give me your thoughts. Let, let me know in the comment section down below. Outside of that, I don't think there's that much more to talk about. It is only preseason. It really is about the future more than the present. That's why I picked those five guys to take a look at. But that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. If, once again, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, that notification bell, so you can be updated every time I drop another episode. And hit that like button on your way out. Help me out. Help me move up that algorithm. And until next time, stay Raider Strong. Night out.